stay. Stay. Okay, so we're back from the multi day hike that me and Jimmy did. Uh, I keep saying that we we're going up to the lakes. And that wasn't where we went. <laughs> that wasn't ever where we were going. I just, I just made a mistake. We actually ended up going to the Orchard Dales, up to like Garsdale. And then the plan was to go from Garsdale, walk to Hawes, try and get up to Keld, and then sort of circle back around. Um, knowing what we know now, we probably would have planned that uh, a lot, a lot better, a lot better. It was a fantastic trip, loved every second of it, but uh, we we didn't we didn't do what we intended to do. Uh, it, it was a successful trip as a trip in itself, but we were unsuccessful in what we were what we planned. Anyway, uh, there'll be a video about that coming up soon. Uh, I didn't do a great deal of filming. Uh, it was very, very, very hard work. And the bits of filming I did get, uh, they might not be that good. I haven't even looked at them yet. They're on the computer, ready to, ready for me to sift through and and sort out. But I wanted to do today is just a rundown of what I took with me, just so just before I unpack it all. It's still all in the in the pack. I've not I've not unpacked anything yet, including the dirty laundry, <laughs> which uh, we don't really have to go through that in detail. We. Yeah, so we were going to go for three nights, four days, and come back on the Monday. That got cut short just due to how intensive the walking was, which we'd not we'd not planned for. We didn't we like I said we didn't we didn't plan it as well as we should have done. When we do it again, there'll be there'll be a heck of a lot more planning done. I promise you. So um, I guess we just we just go through we go through. We'll start from the outside, work our way in. Uh, some things in a little bag that I sort of bought on the way, you know, ibuprofen, deodorant, shower gel. They didn't really come out of this bag. I, I could have fit them in my pack, but there was no point. And then at least if we needed, if we needed this bag, we always had this bag. That's nothing. It's just a few little toiletry things. I believe I've got a few more toiletry bits and bobs in the top section of this bag. Uh, a lighter. I did have some lip balm just for when my lips started getting a little bit dry, but I have taken that out already. You know, I mean, everybody, everybody knows what lip balm is. Nothing exciting. I took some little scissors just in case we needed bandages or anything needed, anything needed it. They they go along just with this. I just didn't want to put them in the first aid kit in case they punctured something. First aid kit didn't get touched, this is still sealed, I've never actually opened this. It's pretty, pretty decent kit actually, you've got alcohol rubs, uh, saline solutions, bandages, eye drops, tweezers, all the normal sort of stuff that you'd expect to get. A 92 piece first aid supply, nice and cheap off Amazon, comes in a nice little bag, you can either you can either keep it in that bag, put it in something else that you might already own, I don't know. I think I already mentioned this particular this particular thing in my previous video about my day-to-day -day kit. On the front I have two carabiners, one of which has my hat. It did have a, um, a waterproof match, so you basically fill it up with fuel and then you dip it in. And it's just like a wick with a metal striker on it and then on the outside it had like a ferro rod type thing and you'd just strike it and it'd set on fire. That went missing. I've got the ring for it. I've got the little connector for it, but the actual thing itself, I was just looking at my bag and I noticed it had gone somewhere. So that's somewhere in the, in the Yorkshire Dales, which I'm not very happy about. One, I don't like leaving shit about. And two, it's gone on it, it's gone. Uh, next up on the Caribbeanas, I've got my cookser. I don't like it. I don't like it, I'm going to be honest. Um, I'm going to get one of those silicon foldable travel mugs, I think. 
It tastes very woody, right, when, when you drink water out of this. Now, I don't mind that. I don't mind that. I expect it to taste a little bit woody. But you can also sort of taste like a varnish, because they've obviously varnished it, and you can taste that in it. And it's also very heavy. Very heavy. I'd rather just have a little travel mug. I'll probably make a cookser one day for myself and not varnish it, which I might use. But that's going in a drawer now, and that's not... That, that won't be coming back out, I don't think. That won't be coming back out, unless unless needed. Now, I say I haven't unpacked anything, but I obviously, I obviously must have done, because this used to contain my compass. I'll find it. I'll find the compass. Found it. Got it. So, oh, compass. I think I've already mentioned this as well on one of my last videos. Let's see if I can get it without it. Blinding. That light's not helping anybody, is it? Yeah, it's just a metal metal compass, quite decent. Uh, you've got a little thing in there. I don't know if you'll be able to see it on camera. Here yeah, you can. There you go. So you can look through that and look through that iron sight at the top. You can take a bearing really accurately. Uh, didn't really come in much handy, to be honest. That thought it we're gonna we're gonna use it a lot more. You can also take that magnifying glass part out of the front and you can then use that to read the finer stuff on your ordnance survey maps. I will put a link to everything underneath in case anyone wants it. It was quite cheap, I think that was about £10. It's very sturdy. Uh, it's got a... Let me show you on the back. It's got like a... Got like a little ring ring pull thing that you can fold down or have up that you can tie tie to to attach it to your belt or your bag or anything you want to attach it to. Very decent bit of kit that. Happy with that. We did use it a little bit, but we didn't we didn't need it. We didn't need it because we had the maps. The maps I'll go into again. I have done a video on how to get the free maps, which I'll put there. In this little white box. I hope, I hope that's right. I hope it'll flip it. I always get it wrong. Um, if you want a video explaining how I patched all the all the screenshots together to make the big map, uh, I'll I'll more than happy do that. If you let me know, if you let me know that you want that. Next up, uh, what has he done here? Jimmy stitched me up right good here. There we go. Okay, uh, we'll do the we'll do the another outside pocket next. In here, in the front, literally nothing at all. Thin as you like, is my. Oh, it's a bit dirty. She's dirty. Goofy. This is my bush box. This needs a clean. Holy shit. Bush box, fold in, folds up into a square, clips together, you've got a tray, it goes into the bottom, and you've got a, a basically a container for fire. And you have a little contained fire in there, you know you're gonna burn burn the area down, you know you're gonna have a nice meal. That is fantastic, absolutely fantastic. Like we on the first night, um, You'll see on the video, we tried to cook steaks and Jimmy had his alcohol stove. Uh, and we had that going, he lit that. We didn't really have much in the way of a windbreaker, so the alcohol seemed to burn out rather fast, which was not ideal. Uh, so I got this out, we managed to find some, luckily we managed to find some um, it was wet through, it was soaking wet, but we found a big massive stick and when we cut it open, we found that the inside was still rather dry, so I managed to cut chips off of that and get this lit. We managed to have some nice steaks on our, on our first evening, which was much needed, much needed. I'll explain about that another time. We have another front pouch. Yeah. Lots of pockets on this bag, decent bag. 
took a notebook just to make notes down in whatever I felt like writing down. I would recommend taking a notebook and a pen. Uh, you can buy waterproof notebooks, which I think I'm going to move on to next. As I said, the weather work wasn't great. A waterproof notebook would have been would have been fantastic. But yeah, I'd advise taking a taking a notebook just to remember remember little bits. Give if you if you get ideas, if you say that oh this is not working for me, you might forget by the time you go on your next trip. So it's always good to take a notebook, put the date on, just do a little journal, a tiny little journal. It helps straighten your head out. It helps. It helps with a lot of stuff, to be honest. I'd, I'd highly recommend always, always carrying, carrying a journal. Uh, it's just a battery pack that I borrowed off a friend, my old head chef. So thanks for that, Kev. That came in handy. Battery pack, especially if you, uh, if you're going to be doing filming or anything like that, take a battery pack. You'll need it. Took a couple of tins. A couple of Altoid tins, just in case I needed it for anything, if I found anything I wanted to save. Uh, I did take a couple of wood shavings in one, just in case, just 10 pegs, 10 pegs, nothing. Yeah, Altoid boxes, uh, very useful. You can use them, put in 100% cotton, chuck them on a fire, leave them closed, you'll have char cloth to help you make another fire later on. Uh, you can use them for, as I said, I used mine, uh, there's one, if I find it, I'll show it, well I will find it because it's in here. I've got one that's just filled with like fine wood shavings that I made before I went in case we had trouble starting a fire. So at least I had the fine material to get a, to get a good fire going, which did, we didn't need, luckily. Uh, but if we had it done, at least I'd have had it. Uh, what else we got in here? A couple of lengths of paracord. Self-explanatory, you're going to need to tie some up at some point. I came in handy for stringing up the tarps and stuff like that, which you'll see in the next video. Uh, my jack pipe knives obviously came in handy. I wish I'd have just took the smaller one, didn't need the big one. Uh, I don't actually know why I took the big one. But that's food for thought for next time. I don't, I don't need the big one unless I'm doing something that specifically involves splitting wood. Uh, when I wouldn't need the act, I don't know. I don't know why I'd take that. I'll think about that more next time. Uh, I have shown these before. They're just standard little Jack Pike knives. Very cheap. They they do the job. Easy to sharpen. Uh, that's the smaller one, and then this is the bigger one. Yeah, they do they do what they need to do. That's about how big they are compared to my massive head. So as you can see, that's about two foot long. Yep. Big head joke, if you didn't, didn't get that. Just putting these back in the cases. I'm coming home. Okay, next. What else do I have in here? Multi tool. Never, I'll never take that anywhere again. I will never take that out with me again. It's very heavy, and I've never used it. I've taken it out on every single camp I've gone on, and I have never used it, not once. So, going with the cook, sir. Get in the drawer, get in your bed. Torch. Torch, yeah? Don't let me go into it. See that? Lights stuff up. Again, didn't need it. Didn't need it because it's summer, summer, and we were in the dales. So even at midnight, there's still a little bit of a sort of twilight, twilight feel. So we didn't need it. Uh, a neck warmer slash face face mask that came in handy. Used it as a headband a little bit. Uh, I'll always take a few of those. I took two of those, and I took two bandanas just in case they got sodden. It was very hot. And it was very rainy at the same time. Um, are we going the next side? Da -da the axe. The axe. I've mentioned this as well before. Very heavy. I would like a. I would like to upgrade this to a lighter model. Um, this saved our life, though. Technically, technically, 
we would not have been able to get a fire going or get the first initial tarp set up when we were stuck in a valley just in the marshlands of, of the Yorkshire Dales without this. This this was, yeah, death would put, we needed that. That was fantastic. This is just a Ultra Natura axe. Like I said, the handle itself, even though it's plastic, it feels very heavy and the head of the axe, it tapers a lot. So it's very thick, very, very thick. Good for splitting. Very good for splitting with the weight and stuff, but I I would much prefer like a thinner profile to the axe. I, I just feel like I'd rather have it longer. I don't know, I don't know. I'm gonna have to do a bit of a, a soul searching for a new axe, I think. But very good, very good. Not good for long, long hauls because it is, it is heavy. I'm not, I had one of those luggage weight things. I don't have one of those anymore. Well, I do, it's somewhere in this whirlwind of a house, but I don't know exactly where it is. So I don't, I couldn't tell you how heavy the pack was. The best thing I can do is try and figure out the weight of all this stuff, add it all together and I'll, I'll, I'll pop that in the description, or I might, shall I pop it there? Should we put it there? The entire pack weighed this much. Sweet. Which, I don't know the number yet, but I'm telling you now, that was fucking, that was, that was heavy. That was really heavy. Yeah, we, we, we I, I struggled with that, I, I struggled. Right, let's delve into the bottom. Let's go for the bottom first. Oh, we'll do the jacket while it's just stood here. Headphones and a spare bit of headphones? No. Pen, spare pen, spare pen. And extra bit of cordage, just a little, I think it's about six foot worth of cordage there. Just so I've always got it on hand and it's not in my bag in case of some sort of rope tying emergency. You never know. Anything else in here? Charger cable, I was using that on the train back. So that's in there. The jacket. Mountain Warehouse jacket. Very waterproof. I was massively surprised. It didn't let me down at all. But with it being sort of like fleece lined, it got, it got warm fast. Which isn't a bad thing when you're not moving. But when you're walking, without having back, it gets hot, it gets hot. So I just, I learned that if I'm cold and I know I'm going to be walking, don't put it on because I'll have to stop after 10, 15 minutes and take it off anyway, which means undoing the pack, taking it off, putting it in, putting the pack back on and anybody that's done it before will know that your shoulders, your shoulders won't thank you for it, taking that on and off. They will not thank you for it. Now in the bottom, we have a few, a few things. Firstly, uh, my Covacure hammock. This, this is brilliant. This is a fantastic bear kit. I think this was £20. Once again, links to everything are in the description. £20, fantastic little hammock. Um, it's got two carabiners attached to it already. I kind of want to split that into four because I found that I'll do a video on it when I do actually do it. But I found that when you've got the one carabiner on one side and one carabiner on the other side, it pinches it right together. And when you've got a mat in there, because you, you need a mat when it's kind of cold. When you've got a mat, the mat sort of displaces itself and it's very hard while you sat in the hammock to rearrange because it's because it pinches. Whereas if I could split those carabiners apart and have two carabiners on each side, one or two on that side, two on that side, it gives you a more square profile. So I feel like I'm going to do that, which I've got two carabiners here anyway. I've got more upstairs. So that shouldn't be an issue. Um, I would highly recommend this. It's very thin, very light. 
It's got a built-in um, mosquito net on it with two like hooks that you hook up to lines, so that keeps that off your face. Very comfy, very lightweight. The, it comes with its own. Uh, I think they're in the top of the bag. Comes with its own set of these ropes that tie around the tree or whatever it is you're attaching yourself to. It's gonna be it's gonna be more more likely a tree than anything else. You get one there, you get one here, one for each side, and they're very long, and it gives you a very large number of ways you can tie this up. So fantastic thing for twenty pound. Twenty pound. I'd prefer that over tent tent sleeping any day. Fantastic thing. But when I go on walks or anything now, I'll take that just to hook up to a tree just for a seat, just to sit down on when I'm chilling. Brilliant. Next, something that I'm not a massive fan of. This is my sleep mat, okay? Now, don't get me wrong, for a very thin sleep mat, it, it's sort of self-inflating, so you open this and listen, if you can hear it. So it begins to fill itself up. Uh, you can blow it up to fill it up faster. You can just leave it for a few, well, for about an hour, and it'll just fill itself up. It's very narrow, which is perfect to get in the hammock. But the only thing I don't like is it pack, when it packs down, it's still very large. If I roll this up now, skip to the good bit. Yeah, even when rolled up, it's still big. If you know what I mean? It's not. It's not a small bit of kit. Um. Yeah, so it's a shame because it is comfy. It's not lightweight though. It is. I don't know. It's probably about four, five hundred gram, maybe. I'm just guessing. Just guessing. Uh. Yeah, it's good if you're, I don't know, if you don't mind the extra bulk. If you've got room for it, it is very good. Uh, I probably would prefer to spend a little more and get like a, an inflatable, an inflatable air bed that packs down smaller. But I think this was cheap. I think I, think I remember it being cheap. I'm not quite sure. Bing! That cheap. Okay, what else is in the bottom? Ah, this I cannot recommend enough. I'm not going to unfold this because it's a bit of a bitch to get back together. This is my DD tarp. So, 3x3 three three DD tarp. Game changer. That, that with this, that is it. You're done. You've got your, you've got your, your sleep, that's your sleep kit. Done. Throw something like this in as well. You're laughing. Perfect. Absolutely perfect thing. DD tarps, you have absolutely smashed this. Um, light, easy to carry. It comes with, I think it's four toggles on each side and then one in the middle. So there's countless ways you can you can put this together. Countless ways you can use this and utilize it. On the first night, Jimmy's got one similar to this. It's not it's not a DD, but it is a three by three tarp, and we used his as a ground sheet. Uh, we used mine to cover us, um, and then we just I just had my air, my self-inflating, he had an airbed, and we had the sleeping bags, and that was it, and we managed, oh, it was one of the one of the best sleeps I've had. It was fantastic. That that tarp, fully waterproof. Oh, I love it. I love it. The best purchase I've ever made. That and this together, you're looking at £55 tops. Fifty-five pounds. You've got yourself essentially a tent. Better quality than a tent, and bigger than most two-man tents. So here we've got my zebra billy can. My it's my twelve-centimetre zebra billy can. It does what it says on the tin. It's got a lid. Uh, it's got a secondary section here. You can use to eat out of, or you can use it to cook separate bits, and then you've got the actual billy can itself. Brilliant bit of kit.
uh, boil your water, cook your meals. We did it, uh, I think one of the times we were going to have rice in this top section, sort of steaming away, and then have the actual chilli or whatever you're making in the bottom section. Lock that tight, stick it on your fire. It's even got a little uh, knobbly bit at the top there where you can, you can sort of hang it above a fire if you wanted to. Fantastic, brilliant thing. Love it. Love it. Oh yes. Bag of dirty socks. Get them washed. Chuck them into washing now. Got it. This is breakfast. So, high protein granola. This and Jimmy brought some oats. So I'm just oats so simple sort of stuff. I think it were Quaker oats, I think, in packets. Just some, any oats. And we mix that with these. And mix them with water. Left them in the billy can overnight. And add ourselves some beautiful overnight oats. With honey granola. High protein. Stop the muscles getting hurt. Yeah. Ah. Now I'm a smoker, I'm a smoker right, so while you're out and you want to have a cig, what do you do with your tab end? Altoids tin, ashtray, problem solved isn't it? Problem solved. Oh here she is look, here's a sleeping bag, right. This has been a bane, this was the bane of my entire journey and it's the bane of every journey I go on. So I need a better sleeping bag than this. For one reason and one reason only, right? I don't want anybody thinking this is not a good sleeping bag. So I'll tell you what it is first and then I'll run through it. So it's the Milestone Camping, that's all it says. That's all it says. Wasn't expensive. Um, wasn't expensive at all. I can, I'll see if I can show it. So it tapers, tapers nice and small at the bottom and then at the top you've got the hood you've got like a hooded section so that comes up there and then you've got an extra bit you can pull over if you need to and inside you have an extra sort of there's like an extra rim that goes all the way around it with a toggle so you can pull that close so if you are really cold you can make it so there's only your head that air can get to um, that it oh, there's a little pocket there. I didn't know that existed. A little pocket there on the on the old hood. Brilliant! It's it's absolutely fantastic. It's a, I, I believe it's a three season because I have found it very warm. I struggle to sleep in any clothes at all when I'm inside this, and I've been out. Like I say, it was wind and rain up in Yorkshire Dales, so. It, it was quite cold, but I, had, I literally had to go down to my boxers because there was no way I could live in this without sweating. And I was sweating. So yeah, very, very hot, very hot. So what's the complaint, you might ask? The fact that when you pack this down, the smallest it will go, it takes up more than half my bag. More, more than half of it. It is a big boy. Like, it's very, very big. It does not pack down well at all. But that's probably, probably, because it's a, it's a three season. It's made to, made to be warm, and it does that very well. So I don't want to shit on it. It's not a bad sleeping bag, but for my needs, it wasn't a good sleeping bag. It took up a lot of space. It is quite heavy. Uh, yeah, just, so just bear that in mind when you go in. Depend, look at the weather, see what you're going for. If it's going to be winter camping or like autumn sort of time, that's great. It's worth, it's probably worth the extra space not to have to take a blanket or not to have to take extra thermals to sleep in. Because you don't, you won't need it. I guarantee you won't need it. Maybe in the winter you might need it. Like thermal, thermal leggings and stuff like that but if it's if if you go in sort of spring summer mid mid year sort of time 
just get a thinner slit. Don't don't go for a three season. I, that's one thing. That's one thing I am def that's the next purchase I'm making is I'm getting a thinner sleeping bag. Or just a wool blanket or something. Bandana. Just for wiping stuff down and wear it around my head if I want to. Oh crap. These are not mine. These are Jimmy's. These are Jimmy's um summit summit uh waterproof pullovers. So these just go over the top of your whatever you're wearing. And they keep you waterproof. Uh, they came in handy. I'll have to get him them back. Sorry, Jimmy. If you, I know you're watching. I'll get you them back, eh? I could message you now, but I'd rather you see it on here. Then I know you've seen it. Bladder. Throw it away. Don't need it. Don't need it. I took this. I filled it up with two litres of water. I didn't need it. Didn't need it, I was literally carrying two, two, two and a half, something like that, litres of water for nothing. For nothing, I didn't need it, because Jimmy had his um, soya bag thing, so you fill the bag up, you squeeze it down, it filters the water through. I didn't need to take any clean water. This was just a waste of weight. Absolute waste of weight. And, not to mention, I was cleaning it out, and I was doing the thing where you sort of spin it to get all the excess water out, and the the end flew off. So that's that's in a that's in a field somewhere in in the in the dales, so I apologise for that. Mr Mr. Farm Man. You've got my end in your in your field. And I, I do feel bad for that. I don't know where it's gone. It, it you I heard it fly through trees, you heard it go like just just flying through trees. There were no way that were coming back massively unfortunate. Gaffer tape. Uh, Jimmy did split his tarp at one point. He got a little a hole in it. I think it was a burn hole actually from from the first night when we had the the fire in the bush box because the wind was hitting quite hard. It was blowing the ash around and two bits of ash must have fallen onto his onto his tarp. So I, I did suggest that he use this to patch it up but he said he was okay. It's got that anti-rip uh, you know the lines that go through the tarp, they let like go across and down that make it so that the tarp won't rip if it does get a hole in it. So he was fine with it and he's got a repair kit at home so he's going to fix it like that. But it is good to have just in case your airbed gets a puncture or your bag rips or anything really. If you need, if you need to repair anything on the fly, temporarily, take a bit of, take a bit of tape with you. It won't hurt. And I believe... Hold on, what we got here? Ziploc bag, just to keep some stuff dry if you need to. I didn't need that, because this bag's pretty waterproof. Life straw, just for drinking straight out of the streams if you want to. You literally pop this bottom off, it's got a filter in the bottom. Uh, pop the top off, donk. Stick the bottom in the water, in the river, in the stream, fill a jug. If you want to, and then just, just drink, just drink out of that. Another thing I've not actually used yet. I've had this for a good six months, and I've never, it's never been used. I think you get ten thousand gallons out of it. Yeah, I think you get ten thousand gallons out of it, and it's just, it's just simple to use. It's very light. It weighs nothing. It's quite small. You just slip that in the side of your pack. And forget about it, really. What else we got? Ah, these are my wood chips that we didn't actually need to use. So what I did is I just took a stick and just took a load of curls off it and just filled an Altoid tin with wood curls. So if we did need that, at least we had it. We didn't. We were very successful with the one fire that we had. I think we only had one fire in the bush box and that was for the steaks. The rest of the time, the alcohol stove was more than adequate. And I think the rest just spare clothes. Uh, some shorts, which I didn't need. Uh, that was a t-shirt that I wore. And then like a hiking t-shirt. That were that was nice for it. Like in the evening. Quite soft. Spare keks. Uh, this was a spice mix I made for when we were cooking the steaks and things. It's just stuff like paprika, cumin, 
uh, kefir lime leaves, loads of salt, pepper, just, just a spice mix I made up. And that was superb, superb. Moisturiser, moisturiser. You can, can you see my face? You see how red my face, I don't know if you can tell. You don't really know what I normally look like, do you? Um, that's my hand and that's my face. My face got very red. Very, very red. We got, there was, there was half an hour, I think, of, of proper sunlight through the entire thing. Yeah, I got sunburn. I, it's something I didn't think of is putting on, uh, like sun cream. I, on a morning. I didn't think about it because I just thought, well, it's not going to be sunny. I'm not going to need it. You need it. You, you, you 100% need it. I came back on, it was Sunday morning, uh, Sunday afternoon, and I was sort of squinting my face like, oh, my forehead was tight, my nose was tight, cheeks, everything just felt tight and sunburned. And I didn't, I didn't expect it. Luckily, I did take this, because uh, I knew my face might get dry, because I do get dry skin every now and again. And that, that helped a little bit. Uh, so that's up to you whether you want to want to take that. I, I would recommend it. I got these for around the camp, just some tracksuit style shorts. They were really comfy to wear around camp. <laughs> I had some really thin, lightweight um, hiking trousers, but I had an accident when I fell over, and they they ripped big time, big time. So there. I shit them off, knacker them for glue. What else have we got? And the rest, just, just kex, just kex. That's all. Spare pantaloons, spare pantaloons, and my glasses case. And that's it. All that's left is the actual bag itself. The bag's uh, the Ramada big loader, one twenty. Again, another £20 Marvel from Amazon. Um, it's called 120 because they, they say it's 120 litres. I reckon you'd be hard pressed to call this 80. It's not 120. It's not 120. It's not even 80. It's 60. It's a 60 litre. Look at it. You know. When you know, you know. It's about 60 litres. I think they're counting all the pockets, all the bits and bobs. It's not. You're not getting 18 litres in there. It's not. It's a lie. But it's a little bit smaller than other bags I've seen. Like tiny bit, fractionally smaller. But I was very impressed by how waterproof it was. Still, still get get yourself some dry bags. I'm going to be buying a pack of dry bags. Uh, the straps are quite comfy. Quite comfy for £20. The only thing I didn't like are uh, the straps that come across your chest so that strap there and you can see this bit that's meant to go around your waist is it's barely there at all so what I plan on doing is sort of editing these these waist straps to make them a bit more cushioned maybe a bit bigger and they must be made for really obese people because the strap I've had to tie up and finagle it in a way that it's not dragging on the floor when, it, when it's made to fit me because I'm not a small lad but it's far too big even on the tightest it's still loose on me so unless I'm doing something wrong I don't know but yeah there's plenty of pockets in it um, so it is very comfortable it's a little bit heavy I think that's because of the pockets I mean, if you wanted to, you could probably take this front section off. You could probably just literally, I don't know, you could probably unpick it, unstitch it and take it off. I might actually look at doing that, to be honest, because, you know, if I get the right stuff that's smaller, that packs down smaller, I don't need, don't need all these pockets on the front. But yeah, so that's, that's everything. Like, I've got to get this sort of distributed around the house now and hidden away so it's not in it's not in it's not in my fias. Um any questions or anything about any of the items drop them down below. Like I said there'll be there'll be links to everything. I'll try and I'll try and sort out the weights and all that sort of stuff to pop them on screen. 
And other than that, please hit the like button. That helps me, well, it helps get this video out to as many people as possible and also helps me have a reason to make more of these. And also that subscribing the bell always helps everybody. Everybody on here, if you ever watch somebody's video and you like it, not just mine, anyone's, just, just do that, just hit the like. You don't have to subscribe, just hit that like because it does help everybody out and we're all here to help, aren't we? But that's it, yeah, another video of the actual trip will be coming up in the next couple of days, so stick around for that. Until then, adieu. Wait, I forgot, I forgot the uh, stars of the show. So, let me just grab these. Let me just grab these. So before I went, I was wearing, my plan was to wear these. So I had these, these shoes that I got very, very, very relatively cheap from, uh, what was it from? From Very, I think. I think they're about £30 or something. I just needed some at the time. I don't even know the make of these. There's nothing on them. Oh wait. Just outdoor design. There's, there's, there's nothing on them. And we're going to take these. And literally, three days before we went on the trip, they gave in on me. They started to, like, go there. Like, all the soles were going through. There was holes in, in the bottoms. And I didn't even notice, literally, until three days before leaving. And I was like, fuck, I can't, I can't take these. I'm going to get... I know it's going to be at least raining. So the bottoms of my feet are going to get wet. Now, in hindsight, if I'd have took them, I'd have had bigger issues than bottoms of my feet getting wet because it was boggy. Boggy. Proper boggy. So luckily, we managed to find these uh, Regatta Great Outdoors boots on Next. The Isotex waterproof. So they're like suede and leather. Really, really nice. About £80 these were really quite light as well like they're probably lighter than the shoes these are really I, I cannot recommend these boots enough they were beautifully comfy I wore them in for a day before I went because that's all I had they came they came with a day to spare so I wore them to work um, I do like a half hour walk to work and a half hour walk back and I was expecting to get a little bit of rubbing or something like that nothing absolutely nothing on the first day took them with us and after two and a half days, I think we did something like 30, 33 miles like up mountains and up down through valleys and through bogs and across rivers. Like these have been through rivers and everything. I think I've come home and today, today, the day after, I'm developing a, a bit of a hot spot on the ball of my right foot. And that is it. That's all. That's it. These are fantastic, absolutely fantastic boots. Once again, regarded great outdoors. Uh, what's the name there? Isotect waterproof. I'm gonna put information about that there because these are these these saved me, absolutely saved me. Uh, and I, yeah, I couldn't I couldn't go without without mentioning those. They're, those were the those were the star. They they impressed me far beyond anything else. So yeah, I will leave you for 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 proper now for proper for real. I'm off. I'm off. I want to go lose some weight. Jesus Christ.